All right, one down. How many more to go again? You know, I really could have made better life choices. Hello, it's Dragominable here, everybody, and uh... today in the beautiful world of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that does not at all cause any sort of physical or mental pain of any kind, we're going to be covering the Flower Cup, the second of 24, Kill Me. Before we jump into this, I want to clarify one thing that I did kind of clarify last time, but I don't think I did a great job at it. The rating system is set up the way it is to ensure that I can get these ratings out quickly and still thoroughly at the same time without having to think for hours on end. Okay, is this really a 1 or a 6? Obviously, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but... You get the idea. Less is more in this case, and I just want to make it easier on myself. For simplicity's sake, here are the four ratings that I am assigning to tracks. Each of these is along in order, so it goes from dumpster cart to fence cart to cool cart to excel cart on how good I think the track is. So, with all that said and done, let's get ready and fire up the engines to head straight into the flower cup. Yeah, so you guys remember how uh, Mario Kart Stadium completely avoided the conventional circuit branding? Well, the Flower Cup just couldn't handle itself. It couldn't bother to not sneak one in there. Whatever. It is what it is. Welcome to Mario Circuit. Hooray, everybody. Yada, yada, yada. I was going into this track expecting to just write it off as another basic Mario Circuit with not a whole lot to offer anywhere. What I got genuinely shocked me. The track design itself is pretty basic. You have the occasional hazard with a Goomba or a Piranha Plant, and some nice off-road shortcuts, and some cool ramps, but not a whole lot. There's also a nice glider here at the end, but more on that in a second. The upbeat music is also very welcome, and it makes this track feel more alive than it would have otherwise been. What shocks me about this track is the one element that you may have noticed in my first video I wasn't praising too hardly, but they finally got it down. The use of anti-gravity in this track is excellent. From the moment your tires touch that anti-gravity pad, you are flipping in all sorts of different directions, whether it be sideways, upside down, all around, and you're driving along a two-sided figure eight, which somehow took me years to figure out, and you do the whole thing. You drive across both sides, all of it. You're driving across the whole thing. You get so many views of the otherwise bland background, which has now been transformed into this fun house of just, am I, go am I upside or am I upside down? Wh which direct, what direction am I actually? Like, it's freaking insane. My favorite part of the whole thing is the very end of the track. You guys remember that glider I was talking about before? Well, because you are slightly at an angle and you're not quite out of anti-gravity by the time you hit that glider, your glider will let you fly over the starting banner. And it is so satisfying to pull that off each and every time. Now, while I may be praising this track a lot now, it is still going to get a cool card. It is a great adaptation of a Mario Circuit track, maybe even one of the best, but I still cannot give it any higher than this for its lack of originality, unfortunately. Still, that cannot diminish the absolute mammoth that this track is with its anti-gravity mechanics. Good on you, Mario Circuit. You should have changed your name, though. So... Toad Harbor. I've gone back and forth for years on what my opinion on this track is. On one hand, I've revered Toad Harbor as being one of the greatest tracks in the entirety of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And on the other hand, I considered it to be one of the most forgettable tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The real question is, which way do I sway now? For starters, the track design itself has so many opportunities for alternate pathways and shortcuts, it's insane to be honest. Why did they do so many? Unfortunately, this track falls into the same trap that Thwomp Ruins does, though in some ways even worse here, where there's really only one good pathway to take. The double item boxes on the bad paths don't really encourage me to take them because 
they're so much slower. Or maybe I'm just too good at the game. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And I will say, although the anti-gravity section is very short in this one, it does feel rewarding and satisfying to go up on the side of the buildings. It's just a fun time. What else is there to say? Also, in terms of just general design and texturing, Toad Harbor looks fucking gorgeous. I cannot find a single thing to complain about with the textures. You even get a Statue of Liberty Peach. I don't know if that's the official canon name, but that's what I'm calling it because, yeah, it's a Statue of Liberty with Peach. And of course, the music is just top notch on every regard. I've got no complaints. It's busy, bustling, middle of the day, but in a happy, cheerful sense. And I enjoy it. You, you see the pattern of me enjoying happy things? I'm trying to. Now, this is, might seem pretty controversial, but hear me out. Toad Harbor is a city. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has many cities, and it blows them out of the water, but it's still a city. And I don't think that's very original anymore, even if it does look, again, way nicer than most of the city tracks. So, it is gonna get a cool cart, like Mario Circuit, which was also not because of its theming, not put in the highest regard, but hear me out, guys. I still really enjoy this track. You'd know which way I swing now, and it's still a blast to play. Poofing into existence, we have the dreaded Twisted Mansion. Like the name itself, I have some twisted feelings about some of the choices that were made here. Immediately, I have to give credit to whoever decided to make the booze wait until the race was about to start to open the doors, because that adds a very cinematic and almost murder mystery-esque feeling to this track. I really enjoy it. The anti-gravity is also used in some pretty interesting ways to give you different perspective on a boo tea party that's taking place, as well as to drive through a sewer with bonefish. Neat. But now we have to get into some of my issues with the course. For starters, I don't know if this is just me, but does anyone else feel like this music is just a little bit light on the spooky theme? This could really just be me, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's going far enough to really emphasize the scary nature of this ghost house. I also want to point out this glider ramp right here in 200cc. You better be prepared for this. In 150, which is the CC that I got this footage on, so I wasn't going too fast, it's not that hard to nail it. You just have to adjust yourself accordingly to match where the platform is, and you'll be all good. In 200cc, you're going to have one hell of a time trying to not only hit the platform, but also hit it and then drift in time to not get hit by the right side of the sharp left turn you're about to encounter. One more thing I will say about this course is that the Boon Knights at the end are a cool obstacle, but they barely serve any real threat in lower CCs. Overall, Twisted Mansion is a solid ghost track in the Mario Kart series. Definitely not the best, but it is far from bad. And for that, I still give it a cool kart rating. And I imagine the criticisms that I gave for this one probably aren't going to hit too many people. Because again, they're more nitpicks than anything. But this track is still not quite up there with the greats. Racing down the falls to the end is Shy Guy Falls. And man, what a race we have here. By far the best implementation of anti-gravity we have seen so far, even compared to Mario Circuit, taking us up and down a waterfall with boost pads to keep the fun going. Everything about this course graphically just looks fucking incredible. You got the background valleys, the waterfall as you're driving towards it and away from it, and you also get these nice camera angles where you can see the other racers too, which adds a feeling of continuity that not many other courses have. And of course, the soundtrack. What can I even say about the soundtrack? It is in my top 10 for a reason. Yeah, this is a fantastic course. 
I can't even find any minor complaints with this one, other than it's just too short. I want more of it. Can we please just give this the Excel cart rating and move on? I, uh, I can't. I don't want to sit here and then find a complaint with it and then talk about it. I can't. It's just too good. Shy Guy Falls is an even better cap than Thwomp Ruins was, but this is Shy Guy Falls. It, yeah, uh, it, it's so fucking good, guys. I can't. We, we, we gotta, we gotta move on. Let's go. Man, I had a lot of fun with the flower cup. I came into this cup thinking it was gonna be about on par with the mushroom cup, or maybe just a little bit better. Definitely not to the quality that this cup has presented to me now. Not a single track was a dud here, even Mario Circuit. I still hate that fucking name though. A truly great cup in a truly great game. Now all we have to do is hope that the star cup continues the momentum upward. I have a good feeling it will. But anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day, evening, night, morning, whatever time it is for you. And leave a like, subscribe, and again, comment your opinions on these treks. And we'll see you next time for the Star Cup. Dragominable out.